Hi, I'm delighted to be here with Rachel Arnold. Rachel, it's so good to be here back again with you at the launch of Soul Trader. And I want to thank you very much for your kind words on the back of the book and for sharing your remarkable story in the book. And I don't know where to start because I know that you've been on a remarkable journey. And I remember the first time that we, or when I heard you speak, you were speaking here in the British Library and you were speaking about business from the heart. And there's something about that that really arrested me because you were just sharing, very honestly, the story of setting up this huge business, seeing it all crumble. Mm. But there was something quite magical in that whole story and something authentic. And I know since then you've been on a remarkable journey. So I don't know, where, to, where should we really start? <laughs> because, but first of all, thank you. I want to thank you very much for contributing your story because I know that that's really going to touch so many people who are on that kind of journey to do what they're wanting to do. So where should we start? Well, I, I just think that, and I do lots of mentoring, so I see lots of other entrepreneurs on their journey. I do think we are all on this, on this mission, but we don't quite know where necessarily what the outcome is. And I'm, the more that I'm working with this energy, I'm just trusting in stuff to show up. Because mm. I used to have this big thing of doing the definite chief aim and the, the Napoleon Hill stuff. And I'm really getting that actually it's almost like handing it over, mm. like wanting to serve, but kind of mm. asking for the signs and the opportunities and to kind of intuitively go with that flow rather right. than try and switch into logical, what should I do next and which what's my plan? Yeah, which is su such a different, isn't it? Because that's what traditionally we do. It's a totally different way of working for me. Yeah. Because I used to work very much with my masculine energy, yeah. my Athena energy. Yeah which is very much, right, we're going to make this happen, yeah. and we're going to have a plan, and we're going to, here is where we're going. Right. Like a warrior, like yeah. a Bodicea almost. And I'm really trying to work from that much more feminine, intuitive mm. energy that just says, okay, kind of, where do I need to be? Right. And so for those people who don't know, I think that this is really fascinating, because you, for lots of people who are going on this journey of people, who, you know, there's so many people who want to run their own business or do something, that, you know, whether that is that they want to, run a chain of shops, or whether they want to have a big online business, or whether they're just wanting to do something to be their own boss. And many people have looked in at your journey and think, well, I want to be like her because she set up a business, she's run a successful business, she's done, and that's what people think, isn't it? You, you go up there, you do all that kind of stuff. Mm. And I wanted to know, when you first um, uh, ran the very successful business, Red Lake, so what was, the, was that the kind of approach? Was it like, I'm going to do this? What was, the, <laughs> what was your mindset then, and what, what led to that first bit of the journey? Well, it was really that I always knew I was going to do my own business because I grew up above my dad's shop, so I always knew that was in my heart. And um, Red Letter Days uh, was my first business, Red Letter Days. It took 18 months really to get it off the ground, but when I got the formula right and it started to take off, it's amazing how quickly something can snowball. Mm. So literally for 10 years, I was just going with that snowball of energy. And it's interesting you should say you ran this hugely successful company because in... in old paradigm terms, mm. it was very successful, you mm. know, 18 million turnover, a million turnover profit at its peak. But in terms of, I think, new paradigm success, actually if I look back and my life and who I was within mm. that business, I wouldn't say that I was actually very successful. I was very ruthless and I was very, and I got, and I think that's, the, that's mm. that old way of working really gets you into that space of just right. being so determined right. that you don't care about stuff anymore. And, and presumably, I mean, what's remarkable, because from the bits I heard about your story, and I, I know bits of it, is that, but you were doing all that and being a mum, you know, this is one of the things, one of the things I must we're say. trying to be a mum. Trying to be a mum, okay. okay. And that was a huge juggle, and, I, and, it, and actually the business pretty much always came out on top, you know, if it was kind of power meeting mm. or nativity play, it was the, right. and, you know, I went with the money, and that's why I'm saying, I think in this new era, I think businesses are much success. The definition of success is not all about having a Bentley and mm. millions of pounds. It's it's the era of the not just for profit company. Mm. Every time I hear you speak, there's something that there's a switch that I don't know if you're aware of it. I've heard people say it to you. There's a switch that goes on, and suddenly you just are speaking from such a, a, a space that's so rich. Do people say that to you often when they hear you talk? Because there's something there's something that's conferred when you speak. You're not only talking sense, but you're t talking from a real um, rich space. Do people say that to you often? Well, it's something I notice kicking in. Yeah. But maybe because you're a good interviewer, <laughs> <laughs> you bring that out. But, but you know, the, I mean, I mean, it sounds so like that this is a, a fascinating journey. Then, so you 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 yeah. had the success and that male energy and so on, and then I know that then when we met, things had changed. You know. The, 
all sorts of challenges had happened, that, yeah. many of which, which you've written about in your, in, in, in your book, and that must be so difficult, isn't it? Because again, in old paradigm terms, you know, the, 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 the myth is that you, you, you set up a successful business and it's going to be successful forever, and that's an illusion anyway, isn't it, presumably? Yeah, well, I mean, everything is about cycles, and I really understand now about, you know, the tide comes in and the tide goes out, mm. and going with that flow as opposed to fighting it, yeah. you know, because there are times when you know, you are in that place of huge richness and there are other times when you're on a learning journey. Mm. So it's like when the tide goes out, that's when you see who, who's, yeah. not, that's what Warren Buffett says, isn't it? When the tide goes out, that's when you see who's kind of not wearing any swimming trunks or whatever. Yeah. But it's kind of, those are the periods of your life when you go through that searching and yeah. like growth phase yes. that prepare you for the next high tide mm. but, the, but that's that's the really interesting thing at the moment that the um, the way that people make their money in the next wave mm -hmm. is actually very different to yes. the first time and there's a real temptation to go back to the way you've always done it yeah. and I really think particularly women in business we're having to relearn how to make money and prosperity yeah. through our feminine energy yeah. rather than that Athena energy and, and it's, I'm really getting that for me and that's one of the things I'm really passionate about in terms of this book because I'm really really keen for us to have that kind of this particular kind of energy you know that the the compassionate energy and so on in the, in the book I was really I mean, it's so evident that, you know, that the old way just isn't working anymore. And for all sorts of reasons, people um, want balance for family reasons, or they wanted to do something that their heart's telling them to do, yeah. or that the workplace isn't work for them. It just seems that in so many different ways, there's no choice but to go about business in a new way. And you're, I guess, at the... I guess in a way the forefront. I mean, I don't know if you're very mindful about this. You know, you, you often talk about, in terms of business, you know, that there's this whole thing about business kind of tribes, and you often talk about that. Yeah. You're, I guess that you are one of the four leaders in this particular area because you've been there, you've worn the T-shirt, you understand business and enterprise, you're very, very visible, you've been on national TV, you run a very successful business, and you've seen the ups and downs, and now you're on this spiritual kind of journey with a small or a big S. Um, yeah. Where would, what's your take on where it is that we are at now? Because I've seen little clips of all sorts of entrepreneurs pointing toward the kind of heart stuff, but just pointing yeah. toward it. Where are we at the moment? Well, th this is the interesting thing about where I'm at, is that I've got my own personal journey, but it's in the context of what's happening in the bigger picture. <laughs> and, and, you know, everything is shifting and everything, this whole old paradigm is just crumbling. And it's like everything's polarizing. There's a real polarity. So, mm. so this old way of doing stuff is really gripping on yeah. and really trying to kind of stick itself together with sellotape, like yes. your banking structure. And, and over here, yeah. Yeah. there's this new energy of this, this different way of being. And I, it really, really upsets me when I hear politicians say, you know, when the economy gets back on its feet and when we get everyone spending again, and, you know, let's get everyone getting back into retail and shopping mm. out there in the shops but it's not sustainable and we and that i think was it was it you that told me that richard branson was saying that we are we aren't at the kind of pinnacle of corporate social responsibility we're at the foot of a huge mountain called sustainability right, right. i can which is it, how yeah. can you do business and be sustainable mm. on the planet where all the resources are running out oil is running out yeah and i think actually it's going to be the entrepreneurs that that provide the solutions for how the world is run. Quite right. Not the politicians. Quite right. And it's been, and it's, and as you speak now, I realise it's been a continuum, isn't it? And, and often we forget that entrepreneurs like Anita Roddick changed the game when they said we yeah. need to be, you know, we need to be sustainable, we need to be authentic, we need to be, uh, we need to be caring, we need to be compassionate, we need to, you know, and and. Uh, and I guess with what all the stuff that's coming, it's coming home true, as you say, economically, wherever we turn, mm. that we've got no choice. But I guess it's also quite interesting that nobody quite knows what that new, yeah. the new way yeah. of doing things is going to look like. But, but, but you, you sound see, excited about that, because I would imagine you've been successful. Yeah. You know, I would imagine the way you might think through, but there's a, there's, a, there's a joyfulness as when you talk about this. You really mm. are genuinely excited about that is that you know well we're in a whole period of change and I, I think it goes back to that that thing that I was saying before about do you work from that kind of small left brain space where you try and work it all out and try and work out what's the solution for the planet <laughs> or do you actually just create a tribe of people who 
are kind of saying, okay, show sh we're ready mm. to do whatever we need to mm. do, but not dictating, because then that's when you kind of yeah. shift into that old paradigm yeah. of, of like leaders and like the, my way is the highway. Mm. And I and I really think that we are being groomed for the calling, whatever that is. Mm. And so we are. I love change. Actually, mm. I thrive on change, mm. and I, I it excites me. Mm. So whatever's coming. I mean, some people are sort of talking about Armageddon or whatever. And yes, though, I think there will be a breakdown, but you need a breakdown to get mm. to a breakthrough. And everyone else is talking about this new spirit, the yeah. new age. Yeah, so it'd be really interesting to see what emerges, this new golden era, mm. that, um, that what, you know, what is this new era? And, and it's a really exciting time to kind of see that unfold Completely. out of the... The you know debris. Yeah. And I imagine, and I'd imagine, you know, in that mentoring role and so on, you must see this all the time. All sorts of entrepreneurs doing all sorts of exciting things mm. on a big and small scale. And, and being wanting, called, you yeah. know, as you say, from the heart, you know, doing stuff yeah. that they're, they're called to do. That and and what's happening is anything that isn't working for people is just dropping away. Yeah, that's right. You that's know, the relationships right. or the jobs yeah. or the the businesses that yeah. aren't working, and you know that nothing can sort of sustain this mm. in, in this energy that isn't pure. And this sort of new crystalline energy, which is very pure, and it has to—you have to be in integrity. Yeah. And anything yeah. that isn't in integrity just Quite right. doesn't work and rankles. Quite right. You know? Before we close, I've got to ask you a little bit. Tell us a little bit about what you're up to. I'm really looking forward to probably gone by the time lots of people watch this. You've got a wonderful event coming up. There's a solopreneur event and so on. Tell us for for the people.